Yo, this is the Scar City Studios YouTube channel. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. And our sponsors are Alpha Claims and Hire Birmingham, the leading and best accident management company. Get a replacement car anywhere in one hour. I really appreciate you joining me today and this story comes from Wolverhampton. Rest in peace to Keelan Wilson and my condolences to his family. This murder took place in 2018, the 29th of May. The family have been waiting for justice for nearly three years. For over one year, nobody was even arrested or charged with the murder. And it got to the point where it felt like they wasn't getting answers, even though the answers lay in the community. This story is an example of how in the cities nowadays, your child is at risk walking out of the door. As soon as they walk out the door, the friends they associate with, anyone they come into contact with, somebody along that path is going to be associated with gang culture. And sadly, when they're young, they make friends and then the police or the locals will label them as a gang. And it's a downward spiral. And this is mainly a story about how families are trying to battle to stop their children from getting involved in these sort of crimes. And having spoken to his father for over a year and a half, I feel like I've got a good idea of the boy that Keelan was. And he was so much more than just what happened in this story. But in this video, we're going to be talking about the actual case and what has happened today in court. Keelan was attacked in Strathfield Walk just by his home at 11pm and he sat in a taxi. He was stabbed 43 times by four males that were aged 19 and 20. This is another thing that has become normal nowadays. Hurting children like older males attacking kids and, and nobody judging them for it. His death, they say, was a culmination of increasing acts of violence between opposing gangs in Wolverhampton. There had been a series of incidents at various locations across the city in the days and weeks preceding, and there was also a number of outbreaks of violence and disorder that day. The first, the police say, took place on Victoria Street. An associate of Keelan was attacked at 3.30. It spilled out into the surrounding streets and culminated in the production of weapons in broad daylight in a busy area in the city centre. And of course, this was all caught on CCTV. The second incident took place on Leg Street. Keelan was dropped off at nearby Jones Street and he wanted to check that his friend who was involved in the previous incident was okay. Shortly after arriving, Keelan and two others were shot at by a group of youngsters on bikes. No one was injured, but it was clear there was tensions running high between both gangs involved at the time. And these examples show that these young children were actively running around the city trying to murder each other, like day in, day out. And this was supported by the music that they then went on to create. Gang culture is nothing new to Wolverhampton and gang violence is definitely not either. But this is just a new generation that are trying to compete with the olders. The violence ended with Keelan's tragic death a little later near his home. Keelan and his friend met earlier on in Leg Street and spent some time around a Citroen car. Police said that this car was unreliable and broke down on several occasions. They were seen attending to this car and they asked people passing by if they could get a taxi. The taxi came three minutes later. Meanwhile, a group was heading towards Keelan and he was attacked by them. The defendant stabbed him 43 times. Detectives carried out painstaking extensive investigation, they said, and a number of people were arrested in connection with his death over the next 18 months. As part of the inquiries, they trawled through hundreds of hours of CCTV, witness statements and mobile phone records. And today, Tariq King, Nahemi Tampuo, Zene Phillips and Brian Sasa from Heathtown were all charged and convicted of his murder. They were found guilty after a lengthy trial at Wolverhampton Crown Court and they will be sentenced on Friday the 19th of March. Detective Inspector Nick Barnes from the Homicide Team said Keelan's death was tragic and he was brutally murdered by a group who chose to carry knives. It's a tragic reality of the increasing number of young people that decide to carry weapons on the street. And that was the official police statement and... We'll go and reference the Express and Star newspaper to see the coverage and example from the media and try to explain that and try to try and make sense of that. They say that a change in gang allegiance sparked an escalating feud that ended with the 15-year-old being killed. They say the two gangs, as was revealed in court, were called V2 and V3. There were two different postcodes in Wolverhampton and some of them had different names like BDG and Trisblock. As you can tell from the postcodes WV2 and WV1, these lived very nearby to each other and some of them used to be friends and this is literally how it came about. 
is that these people live in the same area. And from that incident, it sort of escalated as a tit for tat, which a few years ago would have been a perfectly normal thing, somebody to just stop hanging around with a certain friend. But nowadays that can result in serious issues. A witness in court said they were running and carrying some sort of baseball bat or pole. They said at least two of them were carrying weapons and the lighting was bad in the area. But the witness said he heard shouting and yelling. And then before they knew it, there was baseball bats and stabbing. After the attack, the group fled and Nahimi Tampuo travelled to Telford to try to dispose of bloodstained clothes that contained the victim's DNA. Tampuo handed over his jacket, trainers and trousers to two individuals, but the items were never disposed of. They ended up connecting him to the crime scene. He said in court the clothing was given to him by a man that had been involved in the shooting and that excuse was dismissed by the jury. DNA evidence also recovered from the taxi that Keelan had been killed in showed fingerprints from Pennant Phillips on the rear side of the handle and Sasser's fingerprints was on the near side door. Pennant Phillips' defence was that he regularly used taxis and his prints could have been on the car from a previous journey. They then later talk about a rap song that was glorifying the death of Keelan and it was found on Tampo's phone. They said the drill song made reference to Keelan's nickname and he spoke about stabbing and killing people. In court, they used PC William Betts, who they said listened to music growing up. He was an expert witness for the prosecution. They believed that two or three people featured on the same song, but their identities have not been confirmed. And there is various different songs where these groups are sending back for each other and sort of escalating the violence that has already been started via songs such as Message for the Ups. So it's really sad to see that this is escalated to this stage and also shows how easy it is that it is just a case of your friends in your local neighbourhood could get involved in something that you should not be involved in. And it takes a lot to be able to walk away and not be involved in this sort of thing. But at the same time, these are the only consequences, death or prison. So I really appreciate you joining me today. Rest in peace to Keelan Wilson. And we'll definitely be back again very shortly with some more about Keelan's story. So I'd really appreciate it if you follow me online at Scar City Studios. And I'll be back again very shortly with some more news. Peace.